I was excited to see our guys, uh, you know, so happy to be out there playing together. Uh, it was great getting back on the court just a couple of days after the Purdue game. You know, anytime you go through an emotional game like that, uh, you know, just being able to turn the page and get to the next game is huge. Uh, tonight for us, you know, I told the guys after the game, the word should is, is the most dangerous word in sports because uh, it gets a lot of people, a lot of players, a lot of coaches, a lot of teams in trouble. You should do this. You should win. You should dominate. You should do this, that. Uh, the reality is you got to make it happen. And, uh, you know, nothing on paper or that anyone writes or tweets or posts is going to make it happen for you. So I, I like the way that our guys approached the game tonight. I like the way that they helped each other. Obviously, we didn't face a whole lot of adversity. So it's easier to do that when, when conditions are not adverse. But all we can control is the, is the elements under our control. And you know our guys tried. They had very good intent tonight. Um, obviously, the, the, the competition level goes back up in our next uh, couple games. 31 points for Omax tonight, but you'll be happy to know he said everything starts on the defensive end. So just how does his length and athleticism set the tone, you know, to, for the defense of force, 23 turnovers for him? Yeah, I, I think Omax, Stevie, um, those guys, along with uh, sev several of our other um, guys, have done a good job taking on a defensive identity. Um, you know, it's amazing when you have a defensive identity as a player, it doesn't hurt your offense. You know, in some ways, it helps because it takes certain pressure off of you to be the guy that, that, that maybe guys that are offensive minded think they have to be all the time, particularly when parts of that are outside your control. Omax didn't go into the game tonight saying, I'm going to have 31 points. He went into the game tonight saying, I'm going to play with great energy. I'm going to get my hands on the basketball. I'm going to spearhead our defense. And I'm going to have a defensive identity. And then offensively, I'm going to attack, be aggressive, try to get to the foul line, shoot open shots, attack closeouts. And that's exactly what he did. So proud of his growth. You know, I think games like this are big for all developing players. And that's every player on our team. We don't have anyone that kind of is already who he's going to become. And so when you have a, a, a game like Omax did tonight, it's something you have in your pocket that you can look at moving forward and say, yeah, this approach helped me play that well, and I can do that again. You know, Omax is sometimes in different spots in the one, two, two press. How, how have you learned how to best deploy him out there? It's more really who else is out there with him. Ben, he uh, is a guy that he's very versatile, and um, the way we start, we have three guys on the court smaller than him, three guards. Uh, but we, we kind of put Tyler in the back uh, because, well, for a, free, a few reasons. Uh, but sometimes when we have different lineups in, it might make sense for o Oso to be at the wing uh, or even in the back. Um, sometimes we go back to a zone, and uh, if he's the second biggest guy out there, it makes sense for him to be in the back. But wherever he is, wherever all of our guys are, it's about activity. Um, it's about trying to be disruptive of the other team. And I thought we had some really good possessions of that tonight. You guys had 29 assists on 34 made shots. What was it like to see the ball spread around like that? Well, Tyler and Oso really set a tone with that. And they have really all summer and fall for us, even before we got into games. They've passed the ball really well in the games we've played. Um, we need that. You know, we don't have a team that's uh, chock full of uh, great one-on-one -on -one players that we can just run in isolation and they can just go – create a high level uh, of offense for us. Not saying our guys can't score one on one, but we're a much better team when the ball's moving and we're creating for each other. And we feel like in Tyler Kolick, we have one of the best there is at that. And we feel like Oso at his position is as good at it as anyone at creating for other guys and being a willing passer. So we really appreciate that about those two guys. And it's very contagious. That's one thing I've learned over the years is passing, or not passing is contagious on a team. And so we're fortunate to have, for the most part, guys that are willing to share the ball. 
I know we've talked about Omax quite a bit already, but he missed just two shots tonight, a field goal and a free throw. What have you seen from a shot maybe since he arrived at Marquette to now, and especially tonight? Well, balance. I think his balance is much, much better than it was even a year ago. And he deserves incredible credit for that, for the work he's put in in the weight room, the work he's put in uh, with, with extra uh, skill work. He does a lot of specific balance stuff with Coach Haynes where that's really all they're working on, on drives. Um, and, and, it, and it's paying off for him. I think his footwork has improved as well. And then, you know, he, he took good threes tonight. They were wide open. They were in rhythm. And he made them. He's a good shooter. You know, he's a guy who he does a lot of extra shooting, a lot of extra reps. So it's not surprising uh, that he went three for three from outside. But I think what's been good is three out of four games, he's done a great job getting to the foul line. And so if he can be a consistent uh, force for us getting to the foul line, that obviously was an area of weakness for us last year. Um, it was an area at Purdue the other night that we didn't, you know, we didn't create enough foul shots. So that, that, that's going to be big for us. Keep you on the free throws. You guys had 18 attempts in the first half and two in the second. Was, there, was it just not attacking the rim or was it something to correct? Um, I think, honestly, we had, uh, and hopefully I won't get in trouble for saying this because it's actually a compliment. I, th I think we had three officials that were pretty good at reading the room, reading the situation, and uh, you know they didn't they didn't make a lot of calls in there. Um, but yeah, we shot a lot of threes too. And anytime you shoot thirty five threes, you're probably not going to go to the the foul line on those. Um, and then, like I said, the game was, you know, kind of in hand, so I, I think maybe some of those 50-50 calls um, you know, weren't called as much, but I think those, those guys are great officials for a reason. Uh, tonight, I think the, it was the first time this season your guys were out-rebounded, 42-40. Yeah. to 40. Uh, What do you think you guys need to adjust to in, in terms of rebounding from, from tonight heading into Monday? We were down, I think, 12 at one point on the glass. It's, that's a stat that we monitor throughout the game. They really did a good job offensive rebounding the first 10 minutes of the game. And uh, at one point, we were down 12 on the glass. And we, we just said, guys, we've, we've, we've out-rebounded every team we've played. we got to even this thing out and get ahead. And I think at one point, it was like a one-rebound one differential with maybe four or five minutes left. Um, but, you know, the, that last four or five minutes was – understandably choppy. Um, I thought our guys did a good job fighting back on the rebounding you know, battle. And uh, what do we need to do? We need to rebound as a team. Five guys rebounding together on the defensive end. Nobody leaking out. Everybody helping each other. Everybody uh, blocking out. And then offensively, we've got to uh, be more consistent with keeping balls alive. I thought we did a great job of that at Purdue. Great job. That's probably the best thing we did was keep the ball alive uh, after misses. What we didn't do in that game was score afterward. <laughs> you know, so there's offensive rebounds, and then there's second chance points. And the, the more crucial stat is the second chance points because that's actually putting the ball in the basket after an offensive rebound. Uh, going off that, I mean, you guys had 26 points off of turnovers this time, only eight against Purdue. So how, what does it show that your defense leads your offense in that transition offense? How is that going to be a strong asset this season? Yeah, I mean, the better the team is that you play, the harder it is to turn them over. Um, but I think our guys' aggressiveness was, was really good uh, tonight. Uh, the biggest difference was we got our hands in the basketball. We had 45 deflections tonight. Against Purdue, we had 12 deflections about 12 or 13 minutes into the game. And then the rest of the game, we had single-digit deflections. And again, they had a lot to do with that. But we've got to have an aggressiveness level that says, no matter who we're playing, we get our hands on the basketball. Sometimes when you do, it's going to force a turnover. Sometimes it's just going to knock the ball out of bounds. But always, or almost always, it disrupts the other team. And so that's something that we're trying to grow our consistency with.
you were doing a lot of four-man, five-man substitutions. Why did you think that was the best way to, to do things tonight? I mean, you could sub a million different ways. I don't know if it was the best way or not. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the guys coming off the bench got a lot of minutes. And so once the game kind of got, you know, we got a large margin, it just it made sense to do. And then we kind of stuck with it because I think those groups were playing pretty well together. They had a good rhythm together. They had a good chemistry together, but it's it doesn't uh, it's nothing to read into. It's not like we're going to go to a platoon system or anything like that. I think you know, looking at this game compared to our last game, we had multiple guys that that played almost the whole second half, and you know we had we had multiple guys that played probably more minutes than they're ready to play in in mid November. And so we've got to continue to develop our, the rest of our bench. Um, you know, Jop has, has kind of established himself as the sixth man who comes in and he's ready to score and he's ready to shoot. And he's a guy that, even though he's just a sophomore, he's been around. Um, but all those other guys coming off the bench, you know, they have to continue to carve out that role for themselves as someone that brings energy. Um, that someone that their teammates can trust to be in the right position on defense and to execute what we're trying to do on offense. And I thought tonight, you know, even, it w even though it wasn't a Big East level opponent, was a step forward in that way. Zach played almost 17 minutes tonight. It's probably his longest stint yet. I know you've talked about watching his progress from month to month. Uh, what have you, what'd you see tonight? How, how did he look from, from coming back? From well, the what I liked from Zach tonight uh, isn't isn't on here. What I liked from him was a mentality of here's the game plan. Here's what my coaches and teammates need me to do and need me to be. I'm going to go after it. And he wore it on his face. Uh, he had good energy. The way he acted, interacted, and, res and responded was very good. And that's always the first step. Um, and I thought that was better for him tonight relative to the other two games that he's played. And so results-wise, outcomes-wise, in terms of individual statistics, that's going to keep getting better as long as he takes ownership of taking an aggressive approach and continuing to learn. I mean, there's a lot of little things we could sit and watch the tape together, and I could show you, ah, he's not quite comfortable yet doing this or doing that. And that's going to come. But he needs minutes for that to come. I mean, it's, you can practice, um, but there's no substitute for the game reps. And so tonight was great for that, for him. Kean's a guy you've talked about being on a five-year developmental plan. Mm -hmm. and now that you've seen him get, get some game action, how have you seen him respond to, the, to those minutes? Uh, I, I mean, I, he, he, he looks good dunking the ball. That's for sure. Uh, two great dunks tonight. Great dunk against Central Michigan. He's as athletic as they come. Um, with Kean, he's continuing to learn how to, you know, move his body and manage the way his body moves because he's so quick and athletic. Uh, I think he's gotten better in that way. Still needs to keep getting stronger, and that's a work in progress. It's not doesn't happen overnight. Uh, but he's a guy we're, we're trying to work him towards being ready at any moment to go in there and contribute to the team in the middle of the game. And you know, there's probably going to be some games this year where we need him to do that. So it's about him continuing to develop and practice, getting better, and uh, increasing that readiness. But it's a long-term plan for him. As, he, as long as he's willing to continue staying with it and continue working and eating and lifting and doing his part, I'm very confident that he can become a very, very good player here.